headed to the site now. Some gravel road here. Trespass anymore, I got my own property now. <laughs> Here's an aerial shot we took of it. So you'll see oh, it great. In the plane. This was supposed to be my 42 acre dream property, but it turned into a nightmare. Let's go for a ride. Oh, oh, oh. watching cycle cruises all on one motorcycle channel subscribe today make sure to visit cyclecruiser.com and click on the menu tab my videos and those are a bunch of playlists with all my videos categorized in them to make it easier for you to navigate through first off for those of you guys who want to get my gear like this ultra lightweight carbon fiber helmet with auto tent shield motor vlog camera airbag vest to help keep you safe sudichi jacket uh, uh, shorty gloves I have links to all of my gear in the description and comment section of my video. I've been looking for a rural property with a lot of acres with ATV trails and a nice little house for a very long time. But they get snapped up really fast, especially in this market that we're in right now. I even went down to North Carolina and was checking out some properties in the North Carolina mountains. Man, this is crazy. Not too bad, huh? Oh, another I don't, <laughs> I thought there would be like more expansive areas so that the property goes back into the, yeah, it goes the back woods. And then it follows the creek down for a couple of Okay. Oh, okay. It's nice. But I decided to stick with good old beautiful Ohio, my home state. This was where I was born and raised. And there's a lot of beautiful rural properties here. And I came across this absolute gem 40 plus acres with a private pond, ATV trails, screened in gazebo. It even has a bathhouse. It has one mile of river frontage. has an extra trailer cottage there. It uh, even has uh, you know multiple storage structures here with a workshop. It even comes with riding lawnmowers, a golf cart, a snowmobile. And then that dream started to turn into a nightmare. First off, the seller's agent, who was clearly representing the seller in his best interest and to screw me over and get the best deal ever for this owner, uh, she would not even show me inside the house or any of the buildings on the property. She said only he had a key and he would only show it on Saturday, which was like four days away. Meanwhile, I'm locked in a contract and I only have like three to four days to get out of the contract. So by Saturday, when I meet him, I'll be locked into a contract. Okay, so I meet him, and I, he says, congratulations on purchasing the property. I'm thinking, man, I didn't even see inside the house of the buildings yet. This, I hope I didn't make a mistake. And by the way, I made a ton of mistakes here, guys. Never follow your heart. Use your brain. Use common sense. Um, I did not, uh, so I learned a tough lesson here. But anyways, I go inside the house. It looks really nice inside. Um, but I go in the basement, it's got a really strong musty smell and the first thing he says, you know, it's, he uses this powerful fan to get rid of this the musty stank in there. First thing in my mind is this place has got mold. I want to have a mold check done, which they absolutely refuse to do, by the way. And uh, But the biggest issue with this property, guys, is that the pond is the water source for the house. Yes, the drinking water, bathing water, wash your dishes. And this pond, you have to treat the algae every two weeks. According to the owner, you have to spray this special chemical on there. And mind you, this, like I said, this is the water you're drinking and bathing in, although it does have a filter system in the basement. Do you really trust that filter system <laughs> to, re to clean that water from that pond, man? He even said he doesn't drink the water. Um, so, by the way, they didn't disclose that in the disclosure statement. And there was some other things they didn't disclose as well. And that was my way out of this deal, by the way. Um, but then he takes me over to the trailer cottage. You know, that I thought that was a nice little trailer. I'm like, wow, got me a little egg. They made it seem like it was so great, this cozy little cottage. And you know what, guys? He opened it up in this absolute old crappy junk trailer with old crap in there. Cobwebs. It had an animal's nest in there. It smelled musty and funky. I'm like, dude, this needs to get trailered out of here which they refuse to do by the way 
Uh, then he takes me to the garage, and there's woodpecker damage on the front, which he points out, and which was not disclosed under disclosure statement. And then we go in the garage. I'm thinking I'm getting these a, a cool extra snowmobile for free and golf cart. And it, the golf cart actually worked pretty good, even though it looked crappy. And the, the riding lawnmowers were in good shape. But that snowmobile was crap, man. He said you had to, you turn it on and it leaks oil and smokes and you got to let it run for 10 minutes and then it's good or something. I'm like, dude, don't, this dude's leaving junk with me, man. <laughs> uh, but anyways, and then he, he takes me to the storage, that extra storage trailer deal. And there's a bunch of junk in there, man. And I'm really just leaving all this junk with me and, and charging me maximum price for the property. Uh, but uh, you know, and also the seller tried to uh, screw me out of the timber and mineral rights. Um, you know, I told them I wouldn't buy the property without it. They said, yeah, you can get it. And then the seller's agent conveniently left it out of the contract. And I told her, you need to put it in. So she put it in, had me sign it. And then come to find out two days later, she didn't have them sign it. So I made her have them sign it. And I'm like, man, they're pulling some shady stuff here, man. What is this? So to make a long story short, when I got home after the tour, I requested that they allow me to have a mold test performed on the house. And that mold test has to show that there's no dangerous mold in the house before I proceed buying this house. I also mentioned a few items that they forgot to disclose in the disclosure statement, which is by law they had to do, such as the woodpecker damage on the garage, uh, that the algae in the pond, which is the water source for the house, that has to be treated every two weeks. Uh, also, there were some buried storage tanks on the property. Um, they refused to do a mold test. Uh, and also, they refuted the items I said they forgot to disclose. They said, I should have been able to see the storage tanks in the ground. <laughs> They're buried, mind you. So you can't see. You don't know what that is. And they say, I could clearly see that there was algae in the pond. Uh, you know, I don't even know what algae is. I'm not a water expert. That's something they have to disclose in the disclosure statement because it is a water source for the house. You know, by law, if it's a you know the drinking water source, they have to disclose it if there's any type of material damage, uh, you know, to the water. So they didn't do that, and that basically because they didn't disclose these items, this allowed me pretty much to get out of this contract. Um, but they actually threatened to sue. He said that if I don't buy the house, they're going to sue and basically force me to buy the house, which I thought was ridiculous. So the next day I contacted my real estate attorney and he told me that in his 20 years of being a real estate attorney, that usually the jury will always side with the buyer, especially when there are things that were not disclosed in the disclosure statement. He told me most of the time, this doesn't even go to trial that it's, you know, it's settled beforehand. He said, just give them some of the earnest money and have them sign a mutual release and bada boom, bada bing. So that's what I did. I offered uh, to give $1,000, which I think was very generous. So basically, I paid $1,000 for this tour of the property. And uh, they accepted, but they they want me to sign first. So we're like at a stalemate because... They won't sign, which I'm not falling for that crap again. Last time I did that, uh, they didn't sign, and it was like three or four days later, and I almost missed out on getting the timber and mineral rights. So I don't know what games they're playing. The seller's agent's playing games, man. It's really unprofessional. I learned some hard lessons here, guys. Never go through a seller's agent. Always get a buyer's agent. The seller's agent will look out for the best interests of the seller and try to screw you as a buyer over. So don't ever do that, guys. And also, always get a property inspection. No matter what, no matter how much you love the property and you want to make your offer attractive, always include that inspection no matter what. And also, even have a real estate attorney go over the contract before you sign it. I tell you, this will never happen to me again, and I will be 100% thorough on any property I get going forward. So, hey, tell me, would you have bought this property anyhow? Leave a comment. Let's talk about it. But anyways, guys, leave a comment below. Let's talk about it. Don't forget to subscribe to my All in One Motorcycle channel and check out my other channel, Bug Out Moto Deuces. Thumbs up. Check out my playlist for new riders and popular videos. Don't forget to comment and subscribe and check out my other channel, Bug Out Moto, where I customize a van for my motorcycle so I can live in my van with my motorcycle and travel across the country anywhere. 
subscribe to my YouTube channel, Bugout Moto.